What's up guys, today we're gonna to be looking at my brand new desk setup for 2021. So at the beginning of this year, I decided I wanted to make some changes to my office to allow me to create tutorials easier. As some of you may know, I run an online course called Premiere Pro Guru, where I teach people how to edit as fast as possible. And with my last office set up, it was just such a pain to create tutorials. The way my office is laid out is kind of awkward and it just resulted in videos not looking great and me generally being uninspired to create content because it was such a pain to set things up to film a tutorial. So while the office as a whole is not done. I've got most of my desk setup completed and I wanted to share it with you guys and maybe inspire some ideas for your own setup. So first we'll start with my computer. I'm still running a Hackintosh that I built in 2016, but I have upgraded it several times since. I would love to upgrade from my current graphics card, but GPU prices are absolutely absurd right now. On Amazon, I believe my GPU that I bought for $200 like three years ago is now selling for nearly $800 which is just unreal. Assuming Apple doesn't mess up the new MacBook Pros and iMacs that are supposed to come out this year, I might finally retire my Hackintosh and switch back to a regular Mac. My Hackintosh has been amazing for the last five years, but with the new M1 chips basically killing the future of Hackintoshes, I think it's probably time that I just go back to a regular Mac. Not to mention that these new M1 chips are looking extremely promising anyways. So now let's talk about these monitors. Until this year, I had been using a dual monitor setup with the ultra wide in the middle and the 27 inch monitor on the left. I finally made the jump to a 4K monitor for my tutorial screen recordings because the 1080p recordings often looked pretty terrible when punching in to show things more clearly. So the monitor on the right is the BenQ PD2700U, which is a 27 inch 4K monitor with 100% support for Rec 709 and sRGB, which means my colors coming out of Premiere look amazing. I've really loved this monitor so far and I would highly recommend it for anyone looking to get a better editing monitor. I've had zero complaints and for the price, I think it is one of the best you can get. On the far left, we have an older 27 inch Dell monitor that I got when I built my Hackintosh. It's nothing special, but I've kept it around for the extra screen real estate. In the middle, we have the Acer Predator X34P, which is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor with up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. I got this monitor a few years ago to serve as an editing monitor, as well as a gaming monitor. I'm really into playing first person shooters like CSGO and Valorant, so the high refresh rate rate was really appealing. But as an editing monitor, this screen has been amazing. There's so much screen to cover and using Premiere with it has been absolutely incredible. Before in Premiere, I would have different workspaces for the different things that I wanted to do. But with this ultra wide monitor, I really only need one workspace because I feel like it can hold all of the tools that I frequently need and use. Getting an ultra wide monitor is one of the first things I would recommend to someone looking to upgrade their editing setup because I feel like the extra screen real estate really makes editing a lot easier. Going back to a 16 by 9 monitor is always such a pain for me, and the ultra wide is something I really don't ever want to give up. To hold these monitors, I'm using two Amazon Basics arms and some other random generic arm to hold the Dell. I really like these Amazon arms. They actually work way better than I was expecting them to. Most monitor arms I tried could barely hold my ultra wide, but this Amazon Basics arm holds it flawlessly at max height. So if you're looking for a good monitor arm, I definitely would recommend checking out the Amazon Basics. So now you might be wondering, how I use all these monitors. The monitor on the left tends to hold my notes for writing out course and YouTube videos or just notes that I'm referencing from a client while working on a video. The monitor on the right is normally four finder windows open and this gives me easy access to my RAID which has all of my active projects, two windows for generic things that I need to grab in finder maybe from the desktop, downloads or wherever else, and one for the current video project that is open and being edited. I like to have access to my footage, graphics and audio folders so having one of those open for the project that I'm working on is really handy. Next up on the desk, we have this Screen Bar Plus from BenQ. They actually sent this out to me to check out and review. I was not paid to review this product. They just asked if I wanted to try out a unit for the channel. I'm honestly pretty skeptical of most sponsorship offers that come my way, but I thought the Screen Bar Plus would work perfectly with me redesigning my office setup. If you don't already know what the Screen Bar Plus is, it's basically a USB powered light bar that sits on top of your monitor to shine light down onto your desk. It's supposed to replace what a traditional desk lamp would be. This was 
perfect for me because the lighting setup in my office sucks because I live in an apartment where there's no overhead lights in my office, which means my desk is pretty much just always really dark. One thing I was skeptical of with the light bar is how much glare this was going to put on my monitor while working because the light is right in front of the monitor and I'm happy to report that it's actually none. I don't know what magic BenQ is putting inside this light, but even with the light set to full brightness sitting right in front of the screen, there's no glare. And that is pretty impressive. Another thing about this light that I really like is it sits on top of the monitor, which means I don't have to have a lamp physically sitting on my desk trying to get around my monitors. As you can probably guess, with three monitors taking up my entire desk, getting a lamp on this desk that isn't going to take up a bunch of space would be really difficult. One of the other things I also really like is that you can change the color temperature and brightness of the light. I found that I really enjoy the warmer tone light, which helps my eyes relax a little bit more when staring at these blue screens all day. One other nice bonus is that it's starting to serve as a nice accent light for my desk in the background of my videos. Having the light turned on and set to a warmer tone just adds a nice visually appealing look to the setup that I really enjoy. The only thing I would note for people is that the clip that hangs onto your monitor is a little bit heavy. So if you're using a monitor arm, make sure it can support the extra weight. Initially, the Amazon arm couldn't hold my ultra wide and the light, but that was easily fixed by tightening some of the hinges on the arm. And now it's no longer an issue but definitely something to be aware of if you're using a weaker monitor arm. So yeah, overall, I would highly recommend this light for anyone wanting a really solid desk lamp. It is expensive coming in at $129, but after having used it, I'm totally addicted and would definitely buy more of these. Initially, I probably would have just tried to use some weird desk to reach over my monitor, which probably would have added glare and just made my desk look ugly. This keeps my desk setup looking really clean, adds plenty of light, and there's no glare on my monitor. So I really like it. If you're interested, there'll be a link in the description. Moving on, we have one of my favorite things in the world, and that is my ultimate hacking keyboard. It is a split keyboard that can be linked or unlinked. I only ever use it as a split keyboard though, as it is significantly nicer on my shoulders. It has Cherry MX Blues, which are my absolute favorite key in the world. They also sell these wooden palm rests that you can buy as an attachment, but a woodworking friend actually built the ones that you see on my keyboard here. I really like these wooden palm rests because it prevents my wrist from dropping down onto the desk and into an uncomfortable position, which leads me into a small thing about this keyboard that I really like, which is the fact that it has tilting. These keyboards have little feet on the bottom that can be moved into various positions called tenting, negative tilting, and positive tilting. I always leave mine in tenting as it feels the most natural and comfortable to me. I find it just feels a little bit better than a keyboard that's purely flat. So aside from this keyboard being nice to type on and having some nice ergonomics, it's also unbelievably functional and that is why I love it so much. When you buy this keyboard, there is a piece of software called UHK Agent where you can customize all the keys on the keyboard. You've probably noticed that this keyboard doesn't have a numpad or arrow keys. That is because this keyboard has extra keys called the mod, FN, and mouse layer. If I hold these keys down, down, it gives me access to a whole new layers of keys on the keyboard. So for example, inside of the UHK agent, if I click on the mod layer, you can see that this is what my keyboard becomes while holding that key down. So in my mod layer, I have access to the arrow keys on my keyboard, as well as the numpad on the left. The amazing thing is, if I don't like this, I can map any of these keys to anything I want. If I wanted the arrow keys on the left and the numpad on the right, I could easily switch that around. Another nice thing is if I boot my computer between Windows and Mac OS, with this keyboard, I can press a button and it changes between my Windows key layout and my Mac OS layout, which is really helpful. Another common way that people use it is to switch between different key layouts like Colmac and Dvorak. I'm not gonna go in depth on every feature of this keyboard here, but I think this is one of the best keyboards around and I absolutely love it. It is really expensive coming in at $300, which for most people is never going to be worth it but I would absolutely buy another one of these in a heartbeat if this one broke. Perhaps in the future, I'll go ahead and do a full review. Next up, we have a new mouse that I'm testing. Prior to this, I was using the Logitech G402, which was a nice mouse for gaming with a few additional buttons for macros that I could use while working, but I really wanted to switch to something wireless, so I picked up the Razer Naga Pro. This is a wireless mouse with hot swappable panels that give your mouse different amounts of buttons that you can map to shortcuts. My favorite one for work is the one that has 12 extra buttons. I'm still figuring out how I wanna use all of these, but right now I have multiple buttons mapped to macros in Premiere, and I'm trying to figure out 
out what other ways I can use it outside of Premiere. So far, I'm really liking the mouse, but I've only had it for two weeks, so we'll see if anything changes. Other basic things I have on this desk are two charging stands, one for my iPhone 12 Pro Max and one for my Apple Watch, as well as a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which powers my Shure SM7B through a cloud lifter. The SM7B is on a blue compass microphone arm, which has been a solid arm so far. One thing I'm not particularly a huge fan of with my setup is how my arm and monitors are set up. Right now, if I want to get the microphone arm, it involves me moving my monitor out of the way setting up the mic and then moving my monitor back into position. It only takes a few seconds and the monitor is super easy to move, but it is still kind of annoying regardless. If anyone has any better ideas on how to position it, I'd love to hear them. Then we have this two bay disc dock from OWC, which I use to plug in external HDDs and SSDs for backups. On my desktop, I use Carbon Copy Cloner, which backs up my entire operating system to another SSD every day. That way, if the drive in my computer dies, I can immediately put the new one in and get back to work. And trust me, this has saved me more times than once. Having bootable backups is something I would recommend everyone do because it is really helpful. I've had this dock for a few years and it's been perfectly reliable and it's been handy for plugging in raw disks when I need it. What's great is that both bays accept HDDs and SSDs, so you don't have to worry about only using one bay for one type of disk. The only other thing I have on my desk is my stream deck, which I still don't use enough. I have things mapped to this, but for some reason I'm just too lazy to lift my hand off my keyboard and reach for the stream deck. I probably just need to map more useful macros to it just to force myself to start using it more. So yeah, other than that, guys, that is my desk setup for 2021. I'm really enjoying it so far. I find that my office looks much better. I'm more inspired to create content. Everything just feels cleaner overall, and it's a much better space to film and work inside of. If there's anything you guys would do differently with this setup, let me know down below. I'm always looking for ideas, and honestly, I'm sure I'll be changing this pretty frequently so I'd love to hear your guys' ideas. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to click that like and subscribe button, and I will catch you guys in the next video.